Victoria here. Welcome to the shop. And uh, before we get into today's video, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the uh, to the videos. Um, I never really expected anybody to subscribe to these things, um, and uh, you have, and that's very encouraging. And uh, let's get into today's video, which, by the way, is uh, was inspired by one of you guys who bothered to write in and ask for something specific. So today is going to be the first video in a series of videos on rigging and rigging details and methods. So uh, you'll see some of the things that I've discovered along the way and uh, other things that other model makers have come up with that I've adapted and uh, hopefully you'll find them useful too. So here we are. Rigging details. We're going to deal with two things today. We're going to deal with making some of the rigging hardware, like uh, shivs and thimbles. Um, I was going to include shackles in this uh, video, but I thought it would be better to do the thimbles and uh, the eye splicing, because that's, that's an area that um, a lot of people run out of, uh, they get stymied by it. And it's really not all that difficult. And you can do very effective eye splicing down to a fairly small size. And there's more than one eye splice. You don't have to do the three strand woven eye splice as it would have been done in real life, although you can. And I've got some examples of that here and we'll, we'll zoom in on those in a minute. Um, there's another uh, splice called a Marlin splice, which is really effective for simulating an eye splice all the way down to, uh, I've used it in rigging line as small as four thousandths of an inch, like sewing thread. Uh, it's really great for that. Um, I use it a lot on my beetle cat boat models. So without too much more talking from me here, let's get into the, uh, right into the video and we'll get started with figuring out how to make convincing eye splices at different scales. Okay, so what we have here are three examples, well, really two examples of the two splices. At the top, you've got the three-strand woven traditional eye splice, and down below you have two examples of the Marlin splice at different scales. We're going to tackle the Marlin splice first. So, the first thing we need to do is to get some stock that we can make our thimble from because we're going to wrap this splice around a thimble. In this particular case I'm using brass tubing that I got from my local hobby shop. You can get this from K&S Special Shapes in Chicago or you can get it from your hobby shops. It doesn't really matter. And the tubing is I believe it's 154 thousandths of an inch. It might be 156, but doesn't really matter. Um, but the important thing here is that the thickness of the wall tubing is only 14 thousandths of an inch. Um, you really need to keep that in mind because we're going to cut a small groove in this to receive the rigging line. And the last thing you want to do is cut that groove too deep and ruin the thimble. So I've taken a facing cut with a uh, facing tool. Now I've got a tool in there that I've ground down to about, I think it's roughly 30, 32, 33 thousandths of an inch in uh, thickness. And that's what I'm cutting the groove with. And that groove is only going in about seven thousandths, about half the thickness of the, the walls of the tubing. Um, I'm keeping track of that uh, thanks to a digital readout that I have on the cross slide. So it keeps me from uh, making really terrible mistakes. So there I've got the groove in. It's seven thousandths deep. And and now you see the parting tool has gone into the tool holder and we're going to cut the part free from the lathe. It's a good idea to take something and uh, catch the part with something that'll 
go inside the tubing. Here you see me using a toothpick. And I'll take those final cuts and you'll see the part pop off the lathe right onto the toothpick, just like that. So now we've got our round part with a groove in the middle. And we're going to put it on a wooden mandrel at this point. You need something that you can force that mandrel or force the piece onto the mandrel because you're going to cut it. And that cutting could be done with a saw, it could be done with a file, but I like to use that emery wheel that you see there on the end of a Dremel tool. It's going to cut a groove just like that. So now all we have to do is take it off that mandrel and with a pair of needle nose pliers straighten the two sides of it out so that you wind up with a U shape like you see right there and then the next thing to do is to actually shape the thimble and we're going to do that again using a mandrel this time a rigid mandrel and in this case it happens to be a drill bit that's about forty thousandths of an inch which is about the same inside diameter of that tubing uh, so there you see I've just gently coerced it into shape and you really need to do it gently because the tubing is so thin that it's very easy to distort Fortunately, I didn't distort it, at least not too badly. It's a little bit open at the end, and that's okay, because a lot of thimbles are slightly opened at the end like that. So the next thing we're going to do is put in just a very small amount of glue. I'm using CA glue, and I want to use the least I can, because CA glue has two unfortunate characteristics when you're dealing with rigging line. One is, if you use too much, uh, obviously it takes longer to dry. The other thing is really awful when you've got dyed line like I'm using here and it's a beautiful color. Um, if you put too much glue on, it'll discolor it, it'll make it a lot darker. So you want to try and stay away from using too much glue. And here I'm just holding the glue for a few seconds or holding the line for a few seconds while the glue dries. And you'll notice on the right side of the thimble that I've come off the groove with the line. Uh, that's not a terrible mistake. We can do something to fix that very simply and we'll deal with that right about at the end. Here I've put a clamp on there and that's really just to keep me from upsetting things too much if I make a sudden movement. So now to actually start splicing. We take the standing end of the line and we untwist it loosen up those strands a bit and take the strand that's as close to the thimble as you can get it and open that strand up. You only want to go through between two strands. You don't want to uh, you know weave this down be be between another strand at this point. And there you've got the first tuck all made. The second tuck is largely a repeat of the first. The only difference is that your natural tendency might want to be to go to the very next strand and tuck it in there. For some reason, and I don't know why, it never looks right when I do that. So I skip a strand. So I'm jumping over two strands here and putting it through a third. And then twisting the line back up, pulling the splice a little tighter so it looks a little neater. And it's about the right size, about the right length and there are only two little things to do now well three really because I've got that defect happening on the right side of the thimble but right here I'm just applying a little thin down white glue to cement everything in place and with the clamp out of the way I can take a pair of pliers and finesse that piece of line back into the groove where it belongs and there you have it. So it should like that, look like that when you're all done. So now we're going to take a look at making a real woven eye splice by undoing the three strands of the line and uh, weaving them individually, just as it really would happen 
on a full-size piece of rigging line. I'm not going to spend too much time on the actual process because uh, this is done exactly as the full-size process is and uh, you can find that online. There are countless books about it. I use uh, Stuart E. Granger's book, uh, Creative Rope Work, which was really great, um, but there are thousands of books and thousands of examples of this online. So um, we'll briefly cover the steps and how it's done at scale. And this is a method that's effective for rigging lines between, say, 19 or 20 thousandths and all the way up. The bigger the better, but you can do it as small as 19 thousandths. So let's take a look. Okay, so here's our piece of rigging line. It's 37 thousandths in diameter, and I chose that big size, as I said earlier, so that it would hopefully make things easier to see. The first thing we need to do is get this wrapped around a thimble and then the next thing we'll do is unravel those lines into individual strands. Here you can see it's wrapped around the thimble and here you can see we've unraveled some of the line and uh, what we're going to do here is I want you to take note that the standing end of the this line, that is the line that's laying down on the table, uh, is on what would be, I guess, the left side, you could call it. The right-hand side is the side that we've unraveled, and we've got our three strands out there. That's going to do all the weaving. That's very important. Uh, if we don't cross those lines over the way you see in this photograph, the splice will not come out looking correct. So you've also noticed I've got three different sizes there and I've color coded them. The weaving has to be done in a specific order. If you see the red, uh, the red strand, that's first. And that, just as in the marlin splice, you would want to tuck into the strand closest to the thimble. As tight up as you can. The long strand without any markings on it at all would be next and that would go to the strand just in front of the strand into which you tucked the red line. The last one is the black line, the shortest one, and that will go to the left, not the right, but the left of the first strand, the red strand, and that will get tucked underneath. And that would give you the first tuck of all three strands. Well, at this point, things are looking pretty messy, but don't worry, it'll all turn out well in the end. You'll notice up, right up next to the thimble, there's a small piece of slightly darker brown rigging line that you can just see looks like a loop at the top of the picture there. That is a piece of very thin thread that I tied onto the weaving leg of the splice, or what will become the splice, to keep those strands from unraveling any further. I don't want them unraveling all the way up the thimble, so I kept that there. Now that the first tuck is done, I can take that away and we can move on to the second tuck, which is done exactly the same as the first and in, in exactly the same order. The red line goes first, the clear line goes second in front of it, and the black line goes last behind the first in the only strand left unwoven. This will all become clear when you do it. And as you can see in, in this next photograph, we've taken that second tuck of each strand and basically the eye splice is now complete. Just like the other splices that we've made, uh, just a little bit of white glue thinned down with some water is all you need until it dries and then you can trim off the end. If everything went well, you should end up with something that looks just about like this. And that's it. That's, uh, that's making eye splices. Two different forms of eye splices. One for larger scale models and one that works well on smaller scale models. So here's a few photographs that uh, you can take a look at and uh, you can see there their application, their practical application. This is a 148th scale model of a coasting schooner 
that's the main sheet and you can see that there is a Marlin splice there and uh, I could have gone with an eye splice but Marlin splice served what just as well here's the um, the jib for a 148th whaling ship uh, you've got the uh, jib halyard a couple of shackles and ring bolts and you have a thimble and an eye splice and again the eye splice is the marlin style of eye splice where you just tuck the whole thing in twice cut off the end and uh, you're finished and in this next photograph you have a whale boat and that painter right up at the stem uh, that is an actual woven eye splice and uh, you can see that's a 1 32nd scale model the boat is 10 inches long 10 and 3 quarter inches long so it's not a very big model and you can see that even on a smaller model you can do those woven eye splices and get good results so I hope this has uh, inspired you to try it because it's really not all that hard it might be a little frustrating at first but if you get past that you'll be rewarded for your efforts I promise so until the next video, which I promise I will try and get on quickly, hop over to the website, take a look there, see what you find. And, of course, leave a comment below if you have anything you want to ask or anything that I didn't explain clearly enough. I'll get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. And uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and until I see you again, or more to the point until you see me. Thanks.